We gather here today as close family and friends to pay tribute to Weber's extraordinary life and remarkable journey. Weber was the mother to Irene and invited me, grandmother to Alina and Jan, Angelica and Weber, and great grandmother to Cassian and Adara here in Australia, Sydney and Gray in America, and Danielle in Ukraine. This afternoon's service is a celebration of Weber's life, her achievements, and the family that she created, and all those things that made her unique. Her life of service in the medical profession helped so many people and it played a very large part in defining who she was as a person. The service will be brief on formality, as Weber was never really one who was keen to seek out the wine life. Weber's granddaughter Alina will deliver the eulogy uh, in a moment, then tributes from her great-grandchildren, Cassie and Adara. Following the tributes, there will be a short memorial video to share some of our fond memories and to put a life well lived into images. At the conclusion of the video, I'd invite you all to remain, enjoy some refreshments and share some memories. So on that note, I'd ask Alina to come and deliver the eulogy. It's amazing that he worked there 
with, I would imagine, so much resentment. But he worked there. Their next door neighbors were very, very poor and they had a lot of children. And the neighbor begged Andrew at one point to bring them some wheat, which was against the law because it would be stealing from the Soviet government. And he, Andrew, felt so much compassion towards the neighbor and he didn't want to watch his kids die. So he stole one kilogram of wheat and brought it to him from the mill. And the government found out, they prosecuted him and he was put to jail. He later managed to escape. And grandma told me stories of how she remembered walking for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. She was really, really little. And she remembered her feet hurting. She was really exhausted. But they had to do that in order to escape uh, so he wouldn't be captured. And uh, they, um, she remembered that she could not get out of bed for a few days from exhaustion after this. They ended up living in a tiny village called Tarumovka in the Dagestan region. So this is where Chechnya is, still in Russia. It's north of Caucasus Mountains. They were really poor, their house didn't even have a floor. When grandma was in primary school, she had to get up really early in the morning to milk the cows. Can you imagine the Americans milking them? Your kids would probably, that's really good, they would probably get up at 5 a.m. to milk the cows. <laughs> I doubt one. <laughs> but that's what people did to survive. That's just how it was. And uh, also grandma told me something really nice that they had a cow that she really loved and the cow's name was Lastichka. And Lastichka had uh, this obsession with cherries. So she would sneak out of their backyard and would go into the neighbor's backyards and would eat the cherries <laughs> in summer. Lastichka was not very popular with the neighbors, obviously. <laughs> she and her middle sister Eugenia had to share the same pair of stockings. So grandma went uh, in the morning to school, she had a morning shift, and then Eugenia had an afternoon shift at school, and that's how they would exchange their stockings. Then World War II broke out and Andrew, her father, enlisted as a volunteer and was sent to the front line. Lucia was fearful that her village would be occupied by the Nazis, so she changed the document to make grandma a year younger, because just to ensure her that extra protection that she wouldn't be taken to a Nazi camp. And after the war, the archives burned down in, from fire and those documents disappeared. So grandma actually is a year younger. <laughs> Andrew fought, uh, fought throughout the whole war and was seriously wounded. He went on to be in the forces that captured Berlin on the 9th of May 1945, which is a European victory day. As a result, he was decorated for courage. Grandma's brothers, they were sadly killed in the war. During the war, uh, during the war, Luba worked in a collective farm, and all the harvest was sent to the front line to help the soldiers. Then something happened. Grandma's, uh, grandma contracted malaria from a mosquito bite. And her malaria turned into meningitis and symphilitis, which caused inflammation in her brain. She needed urgent help. Their basic house did not have the floor, but it had the tallest tree in, the back, in their backyard. And Soviet soldiers, they would use that tree, they would climb up that tree to inspect surroundings every day. And it was really, really fortunate for grandmother because they saw that how unwell she was. 
and they picked her up, put her in a truck, and Dusa came along and they took her to a um, hospital in a major city. And that's where Dusa was told by the doctors that grandma needed um, a um, procedure to drain the pressure from her brain. And that she had a very small chance of survival. The procedure went well, but her recovery took a really, really long time, which meant that for six months she could not speak at all. Then very, very slowly she started to get on the road to recovery. Some funny story that um, when later on she was asked to look after her younger sister, Lara, because Lara was much, much younger, and grandma would give her some orders, like, don't do this, so, and Lara would say, at first, learn to speak properly, and only then you can tell me the orders, what to do. But diamonds are made under pressure. And while grandma was recovering, she made a pledge to herself that she will get better, and she will become a doctor, She wanted to cure everyone around her. She just wanted for everyone to be healthy. It's okay. My emotions really is up and then down and then up. Like a roller coaster. It's okay. We all love Disneyland. She was very lucky as her teachers in that really tiny village, which was in the middle of nowhere but they were from St. Petersburg because it was World War II and they were evacuated so she actually ended up getting education from the best of the best and that really had to her into having really good knowledge and skills and she was very lucky to be accepted into Vladikavkaz that's the major city next to them Vladikavkaz University to study medicine. These times were hard because it was straight after Second World War. Poverty everywhere, there was not enough food anywhere. But all medical students, they were given bread vouchers. So for each day, you were entitled to get 200 grams of bread. The bread was made of corn, which meant that it was really, really dense. And it was very tiny, like a little brick. And grandma told me that sometimes she would swap that bread for a bag of dry pears on the market because she said at least like you could chew for a long time, even though it wasn't really feeling, but at least like you felt like you were eating a lot. During the university years, grandma worked as a nurse to help pay for her way. She shared room with a friend and once her friend's bread vouchers were stolen and like a whole pack of them for entire month. And being compassionate that she is, she shared her bread vouchers with her friend for that whole month. And they remained friends until the end. Grandma really enjoyed studying medicine. At some point, I think in the year three, she decided that she wanted to specialize in cardiology. And upon graduation, she received an internship in St. Louis. She thought that living in focus really equipped her to deal with the cold, but it was nothing like in St. <laughs> where even the eyelashes turned into icicles. So one day, Luba meets Arkady, this man who worked in oil industry, and Arkady gives her a royal present, a real fur coat. They got married and they had two children, Irene and Vladimir. By that stage, Luba had become a very well-respected doctor she brought her mom, Dusa, from Caucasus to live with her and also her youngest sister, Lara, as well. And later on, Lara got into university to become a teacher. Grandma 
was the first one at that time to buy a television because it was like people had radios but no one had televisions. So she would have all the neighbors and friends who would come and watch a television and it looked like if you imagine it now, like a really this old fashioned box with this lens which looked like an aquarium, you had to pour water into it and put the display the lens in front of TV and it enlarged the image. In 1962, Luba with her family moved to Ukraine to a city called Red Donetsk. Red Donetsk was named after Riva Donetsk and Red because in World War II a lot of blood was shed and the river looked red and that's therefore the name Red Donetsk. This city was formed because they discovered natural gas and oil and Luba's middle sister Eugenia with her husband Ivan moved there first and encouraged Luba to follow. So, Grandma worked in Red Donetsk Central Hospital as the head of cardiology department for many, many years, so three decades. I came to live with her during my primary school years and remember how dedicated she was to her profession, to her patients. She would, she would wake up in the middle of the night. It was not her responsibility being the head of department, but she just took it so personally condition and she would come and check on them personally to see how they were doing, if they were critically ill. I still remember we had lots of little gifts as token of appreciation all over our house. Little boxes of chocolates, little cards, thank you, Lyubov uh, Andreevna, that was her full Russian name, Lyubov Andreevna for saving my son's life, or my daughter's life, or my father's life, or my mother's life, or my auntie. She, she would never discriminate if people, if they were from some little village outside of big city or if they were head of politics in the city or if they were in business or whatever their profession or walk of life was, she had time for everyone. Dusa lived with us, and I remember her extremely well, as I, as, I saw, as I said. Luba was very close to her sisters. We saw Eugenia on a daily basis. They lived close to each other. And Lara, she stayed in Siberia after finishing her um, university, and she married a really nice man there, and she remained living in Siberia with her family. Grandma always highlighted that the most important, listen people, listen up how to survive to almost 100, is the most important ability was the ability to adapt. She opened her heart to Australia. We were very lucky to arrive in Australia because my mom Irene, she brought an Oleg, because of Oleg's profession, we were able to come here. And Grandma opened her heart to Australia. She created new friendships. And even though she was 69, 70 years old, she had to start, start over, leaving everything behind. And it did not scare her. I'm sure it must have been worrying, but she, she was really, really brave. Isn't this lovely? This is Politika. She came here with her children. And Grandma always liked kids and she always like she said doesn't matter if they're crying or they're laughing it's just such joy and delight to have the next generation that's what makes life so special she studied english at hondland tafe full-time even though she was in her 70s she traveled with new friends that she met here to explore australia and on her own back to visit family in Ukraine. She even rode a camel in Egypt when she was 80 years old. And my friend Marina, Marina waved to everyone. Our grandmothers were best friends. Marina's grandmother was also a doctor back in Ukraine. And Marina and I, we met 
pretty much the first year that we arrived in Australia. And <laughs> yes, and then our grandmothers arrived later, and uh, we introduced them to each other. And because they had a lot in common, they became best of friends. Sadly, Marina's grandma passed away. She was a beautiful and special lady. There are some photo shows of a photo display where you will see. Family was always the most important part of grandma's life. We have always been the center of her universe. She took so much pride in everything that kids have achieved. She wanted to be a part of everything. Either it was ballet, ballet performances or piano recitals, swimming carnivals, school, Grandparents' days, everything, everything we did. She even came to mother's group meetings. She wanted to be in our lives all the time, and she was. She loved cooking her delicious Russian food with the Dara and by herself for us. Or reading bedtime stories. Grandma really liked. <laughs> and Hammy would always sleep on Baba's bed whenever Baba would stay over at our house. Grandma really enjoyed visiting Brett and Kylie in Yakandenda and she adored their cats. <laughs> cats and of course their beautiful boys and the beautiful boys that were so good to Grandma and Kylie what is Kylie? I can't see her. What is her name? Kylie. Kylie made Baba feel so welcome, so welcome at their house. And it's just such lovely, lovely memories to treasure. Everyone always adored her and she wanted to help everyone. Her phone never stopped ringing. People would ring for medical advice because they knew that if they called grandma, they felt really, really supported. And also, I have to, I wanted to mention that grandma also really liked Bella, Cassian's girlfriend. She always said how thoughtful and how warm Bella always was. Yeah, she, she said that if you were hugged by Bella, you really felt the warmth. And of course, Travis was her hero. So Grandma was my hero, but Travis was Baba's hero. And she said, you married the best husband and you have the best family. And Travis has done so much for Grandma. Today we say goodbye to her. But Grandma's story doesn't end here. It really doesn't. I can see her legacy shining through. I can really see it in Cassia because the way you care about people is exactly how grandma would care about people. And I can really see it in Adara with her strength, with her time management skills, with her determination and hard work. And I am sure that there are lots of her qualities that in years to come, we will see in Jan's children who live in Miami, Sydney and Gray, and in Daniel who is in Ukraine, with a DNA structure like this. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be really, really amazing. You will be forever missed. You never forgot me. And I'm so glad that she was a part of our lives. We are so lucky to have someone so, so extraordinary who was a part of my whole life until now. She, this extraordinary person was next to me. And that is remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Thank you, everyone. It's hard not to hear the stories.
stories of, of how she grew up. It makes things make a lot more sense. There was never any food in our house when, when we were in, they couldn't get eaten. We weren't allowed to have leftovers, food couldn't go in the bin, and it really had to be cherished. And when you understand the starvation and, and the way she grew up, it makes a lot more sense. And it, it's hard not to compare the challenges that we have in our lives today and to the challenges that her and her generation grew up with. It's right to build those tolerances. Office goes down in 12 hours and the world's coming to an end. Uh, you know, comparison to you know, the world events that form the, the fortitude that we've had for uh, a whole generation. It's just something we simply don't see today, that level of resilience. And I think it was most likely because of those hardships that she formed into the, the kind uh, and strong soul that she was. So at this point I'd like Kasson to come forward and uh, deliver his tribute, followed by Adara. For people who don't know me well, I really don't like to open up about my impressions and feelings, but today is about it's about celebrating and remembering and living for a life. Our parents give us life, our grandparents give us a sense of who we are and where we came from, but our great-grandparents are a gift, something many people are not able to experience. This week, hearing the devastating news of Baba's passing, hit me how incredibly lucky I have been able to say that I have known my great-grandmother for almost 21 years of my life. Baba had a remarkable life. Born in 1925 in the in the cold heart of the Soviet Union, she studied and survived through the horrors of the Second World War, where she was forced to where she was forced to change her birth certificate to evade Nazi capture, became a renowned doctor, and birthed two children with a baby mother and still becoming a doctor. When the USSR collapsed and my mum and her family emigrated to Australia, Baba followed shortly, where she helped look after me. In 2007, her heart stopped, and I remember it like it was yesterday. She had a heart attack. While I was young and confused, I knew it wasn't good, but she survived because Baba has always been a survivor. And in my head, every day since 2007, when Baba was here, I felt lucky that I still had her. Music is special. It breaks barriers and brings people together. With my knowledge of Russian faded over the years and Baba's English bearing the same fate. Music, however, would allow us to understand each other and engage in formal communication. I would always play piano for Baba every time she visited me since I was six years old. I would sit there smiling, listening to me over the years as I would play a beautiful classical songs. It is said that music is the times when words are like, aren't enough, and I cannot think of a perfect example other than that. However, the song is now ended, but the melody still lingers on. I have very clear memories of Baba when I was younger. I remember when my sister's room used to be hers, and Baba used to look after me. Her mum was pregnant with a dog, and my dad was busy travelling to work. It was Baba who was raising me and looking after me. I vividly remember being scared one night, and I was maybe four or five years old, and Baba said in the songs, I always have seen her as a second mother. Which is why today it breaks my heart, because while I know that this day will come, I never expected it to be today. However, my mum sent me a photo the other day of me, Baba, and my cat, Hammy, who passed away around this time last year. Baba and Hammy were always close, and when Baba unfortunately when, when Baba's decline unfortunately began, she was often confused, but when she saw Hammy, her face would light up and she would be happy in the sun. I now that somewhere, whenever it occurs after death, that Hammy and Baba are together, keeping each other company, which is why I love that photo so much. Babushka, yet the vote which love you. Rest in peace, I will always remember you, and I'll never stop missing you until we meet you one day. as long as I remember. 
it's wondrous how you're able to communicate some, with somebody who doesn't speak the same language, but not withheld by the language barrier. It's wondrous how you're able to climb that barrier and feel as if there had been none to begin with. In my early memories of my barber, I recall speaking to her in English and her replying to me in the same language. Although I know this couldn't be possible, so it's interesting how the memory can change reality. She taught me many things, like how to play card games that I still play and teach to other people, how to get along with my brother, which can be challenging at times, and how to look after my cat, which she loved dearly. She was an icon and an inspiration to us all. She used to ask me what I wanted for breakfast every morning when she was over, and I would always reply with pancakes because I used to love them and I still do. And one day, when I walked down to the kitchen, I saw her making them from scratch, flour, and everything else that you would use to make them. And it was then that I truly appreciated, or I realized how much she cared for us. And as I ate them, I truly appreciated the care that she possessed for us. Because now, when I buy pancakes, I just buy the mix. But it was just a little thing that she decided that she would take the care and the time out of her day to make them from scratch just for me. She used to walk down to the store every time she saw us and she would always give me a chocolate bar. And I still love them. And I can't help but think of her every time I ate them. There are so many things that you could say about her. She was always smiling. Now I ask you to direct your attention to the TV, there will be a short visit. 